Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about cortisol and corticosterone. Together, they're termed glucocorticoids and they fit under the umbrella of corticosteroids. Now, these hormones are released most pronouncedly in times of stress. So that means they're utilized to help us maintain homeostasis in times of stressful situations. So when I talk about these different types of effects that glucocorticoids can have, I want you to think about how they can be useful to us in times of stress. Now when we get stressed, what happens is we can increase the production and release of these glucocorticoids tenfold, right? That's a huge amount. Now some people use cortisol as a proxy measure for stress, and the problem with doing this is that cortisol changes with our circadian rhythm. What that means is when we wake up in the morning, cortisol levels are at its highest. In the evening, cortisol levels are at its lowest and actually fluctuates throughout the day. Also depends on what we're doing, what we're eating as well. So it means that if you wanted to use cortisol as a proxy for stress, you need to take multiple measurements over multiple times and make sure that you mitigate anything that can change those cortisol levels. All right, let's have a look at what they do. So glucocorticoids, it can increase carb, protein and fat metabolism. How? Well, it tells the liver to go through something called gluconeogenesis. That's the production of new glucose from non-carbohydrate-based sources. So it's producing glucose from proteins and fats. Pulls the proteins and amino acids from skeletal tissue, uh, which is skeletal muscle tissue, I should say, and pulls the fats or triglycerides from the adipose tissue and turns it into new glucose. That means blood glucose levels go up. Also stops insulin from being used properly. Insulin's the key that opens the doors of the cells to bring the glucose in. Why do we want this? It's because our certain tissues of our body, which are insulin independent, like our brain and our liver, and also our skeletal muscle in times of exercise, they don't need insulin, right? They're insulin independent. So this is important in times of stress. What you'll also find is that glucocorticoids are important for growth, more specifically in utero. With the developing fetus, glucocorticoids are important for the maturation of the gut and the liver. And so some mothers who are going to be delivering prematurely can be given glucocorticoids or may be given glucocorticoids to help promote the maturation of these organs. What about the circulatory and renal effects? Well, glucocorticoids can increase the contractile activity of the left ventricle. That sends blood out to the whole body. So if it increases its activity, it pumps more blood out of the heart, making the heart more efficient in its contractile activity. It can also, glucocorticoids, tell the kidneys to hold on to more sodium. It basically says, Take all the sodium I'm gonna pee out, throw it back into the blood. If sodium goes back into the blood, water will follow it, because that's what happens biologically. And if you increase water in the blood, blood volume goes up, blood pressure goes up. And therefore, the two activities here is glucocorticoids can increase the contractile activity, contractile activity of the heart, and also increase blood pressure. What about skin, bone, and calcium? Well, glucocorticoids, they can inhibit the activity of the cells that are used to promote connective tissue production, one of which is fibroblasts. These make our skin cells. So glucocorticoids inhibit fibroblasts from having their activity and can re result in skin thinning if we have too much glucocorticoids. What about bone? Well, if we have too much glucocorticoids, it can alter the turnover of our bone. So our bone constantly is being built up, broken down, built up, broken down, built up, broken down. This is constant, and it's because of two cell types. Osteoblasts build bone up, osteoclasts crush bone down. Blasts build uh, class crush. And what glucocorticoids do is it suppresses the blasts, the building, which means you have more crushing overall and you can result in osteoporosis. What about calcium? If you have too much calcium in your blood, glucocorticoids can be used to stop your gut from absorbing calcium into the blood, so that decreases blood serum of calcium, and also tells your kidneys to excrete more calcium in the urine. What about the immunological effects? Well, what glucocorticoids can do is it stops, so this is how steroids work, right? Steroids go to the cells, jump into the cell, jump into the nucleus of the cell, and tell that DNA to stop transcribing and translating into genes and proteins. Now, specific genes and proteins, for example, in this case, prostaglandins and bradykinins. These are two pro-inflammatory chemicals. If we stop them from being made, we stop inflammation. 
okay? And so that's what these glucocorticoids can do. They can also suppress certain white blood cells like lymphocytes and eosinophils. It can also stop some white blood cells from going to the site of inflammation. That also means that if we have too much gluc glucocorticoids, we may be more susceptible to bacterial or fungal infections. So these are just some of the effects of these glucocorticoids and what can happen if we have too much.